from our perspective, really what's uh, happened on 2012 has been a, uh, an incredible catalyst uh, to focus in on building both our technical and also professional skills to meet the demands of London 2012. Um, the greatest show on earth demands a certain level of flexibility and agility, which one sometimes wouldn't associate with BT. Uh, and uh, what we've done is basically worked with our core Olympic team, who we call the squad, of a thousand people uh, drawn from across BT, both in the UK and globally. Uh, and we've worked in the last year to build a range of skills so that they are a very high performing multi-skilled team. So that's what we're doing from a BT perspective. Uh, what happens then is those people will go back into um, BT and we will look to use those guys as real games changers, uh, champions in our organisation uh, for the benefit of BT's business growth and also for our customers. Uh, from a, a London uh, and UK perspective, uh, what we're seeing is um, a huge demand for a range of supplementary technical skills around uh, delivering the Olympic Games. Uh, we are working with a number of um, third party organisations to augment our skill set in certain areas um, and we're seeing that mirrored across all of the other technology partners um, involved in the Olympic Games. The scale of the Olympics is such that it draws in those resources and therefore you'll see I think a similar um, extension and growth in skills um, in BT across those other organisations. BT, I think, have led the way in terms of flexible working patterns. Um, we have uh, 100,000 employees worldwide, and most of them have the capability uh, to work uh, remotely and to work flexibly. Um, certainly in the UK, at any one time, we probably have something like 15% of our workforce who are permanently based outside of BT office locations. Uh, one of the challenges of the Olympics, particularly in a city like London, um, is the challenges and the, the um, uh, constraints it puts on travel. Uh, and so one of the things that we've done is a lot of planning for the last uh, two years on how will we get to our key office locations, how will people continue to work, service and support our customers. Uh, and we have a very clear set of plans leveraging our flexible working patterns. Um, I think one of the benefits is we have been using that really as a, a living laboratory to share that um, expertise with, uh, with UK business and we're seeing a tremendous move towards that uh, driven by the Olympics. I mean one very small example would be in, uh, in Canary Wharf which is now the financial heart of the UK uh, and they are having to look at flexible working patterns even in that industry um, which may well require certain changes to core working practices because of the requirements of the Olympic Games. Certainly BT's intention was always to to make sure that the Olympic venues which stretch from the south coast right the way up to Scotland and all points in between in the UK didn't become uh, technology islands. We wanted them to be a real um, really integrated part of our core network. So what we've done is um, targeted our two and a half billion pound investment in fibre broadband rollout across the UK, which it's our intention to reach 65% of UK household, households and business premises um, by 2014. Um, we've aligned that with our Olympic rollout programme. So the telephone exchanges near uh, two Olympic venues have also been enabled to create really a mesh of super fast fibre broadband to support UK business. And some recent research uh, that we uh, completed in March this year says that fibre broadband rollout for the UK could be worth something in the region of an extra £20 billion um, gross value add for the UK economy. Um, over the next 10 to 15 years in terms of the way it enables business and the growth of business, particularly um, incubators and, and start-up organisations that need that flexibility but also need that digital connectivity.